is a great example of this. Dry ice goes from solid to gas right at room temperature. The word deposition is the opposite, going from gas back to solid directly. Skipping the inner phase, solid to gas, gas back to solid are those two vocabulary words. So skipping from the, the liquid phase and you could have solid gas going directly into solid gas. You'd have solid water going directly to gaseous water would be a process of sublimation. This would have to happen at extremely high pressures for water. The energy needed to cause melting is called the heat of fusion. As a solid is heated, its temperature rises and the molecules vibrate more vigorously. Once the temperature reaches the melting point, the molecules have sufficient energy to overcome some of those attractions and the solid will melt. The opposite of melting is freezing. We begin to look at heating curves of a solid. As you heat a solid, its temperature increases. Notice here, as I heat a solid, the temperature increases. But then it flatlines during the phase change. As the solid is melting into a liquid, there is no change in temperature. All of the energy being put into the system is using to break apart the intermolecular attractions as the solid separates to become a liquid. Once the liquid is formed, continuously adding heat energy will cause the temperature to rise. The phase changes have a flat line on a heating curve for the solid. Ice in this region will melt. When it melts, it, in a liquid phase, we can continuously heat it even further up to 100 degrees where it will eventually vaporize. The process of phase change from solid to liquid is a flat process where heat is being put in, but it's being used to disturb intermolecular attractions and just separate those atoms from one another to create a liquid. So there's a whole lot of energetics that we'll actually end up calculating. When a, sol when a high energy molecule are lost from a solid, it lowers the average kinetic energy and if the energy is not drawn back into the solid, its temperature will decrease. Therefore, melting is an endothermic process. Freezing is an exothermic process. We have to input energy to cause a solid to melt. We release energy to make a liquid turn back to a solid. Melting requires input to overcome the attractions of those intermolecular forces. This energy is known as the heat of fusion. The heat of fusion is defined as the amount of heat energy required to melt one mole of a solid, delta H of fusion. Heat of fusion or enthalpy of fusion. It's always endothermic. But remember, to form a crystal is equal but opposite in sign from fusion. So, here we have a look at some of those energetics for common substances. How much energy does it take to melt one mole of a substance? 6.02 is the standard number we'll use quite often for water. I have to put in 6.02 kilojoules of energy for every one mole of solid water, ice, that I want to melt and create a liquid. A little less energy for rubbing alcohol. 5.69 for acetone, 7.27 for diethyl ether. Notice here, these are all polar molecules with very strong intermolecular attractions. Heats of fusion and vaporization. Heat of fusion, how much energy does it take to go from solid to liquid? Heat of vaporization was defined as how much energy does it take to go from liquid to a gas? Clearly, over and over, I can see that it takes much more energy to cause the liquid to gas phase change than a solid to a liquid. I'm really separating the molecules from the jump from liquid to gaseous phase. 
Remember, the molecules are still relatively closely packed from solid to liquid. They're still flowing past each other. But to go from liquid to gas, they are extremely far apart from each other. And to give them that much more kinetic energy to completely separate, I compare 6.07 kilojoules per mole for water to 40 point, I believe 40.7 kilojoules per mole for water for heat of vaporization. And it's not just true for water, but for every compound, we can see a far more amount of energy, far more, is that grammar? We see more energy required for heat of vaporization than the heat of fusion. This is a good place to pause. We're gonna need to grab our calculators as now we begin calculating how much energy does it take to move from one area of a graph to another? Are we warming up? Are we phase changing? Are we warming up or are we phase changing? This is where we need our calculator and some of our delta H calculations are on the way. Let's pause and start up again when you have your calculator ready.